Hey guys, happy Sunday. I know that times are so crazy right now. The world is, is there's a lot going on. I hope you guys are safe and healthy and that you're staying informed. Romeo, Kinsley, Sebastian, my cat, and I are staying home. I have lots of projects that I have to do around the house and I've kind of stocked up on some DIY supplies. So I hope you guys enjoy these videos over the next couple of weeks. If you are staying at home, I hope you find some happiness and joy in watching as many YouTube videos as you possibly can. And um, just filling your time, maybe learning or getting inspired. We're gonna get a little creative with our DIY supplies. I'm not really gonna have access to a lot, um, but I'm up for the challenge if you are. We went to the thrift store a couple of days ago. I wanted to find some simple things at the thrift store that we could flip into kind of really cool pieces of decor or clothing. So roll the thrift store footage. So the good thing about the thrift stores when it's raining is there's no one here or because of the other thing that's happening in the world right now. We're being extra precautious. We're using a lot of hand sanitizer, but I already found something really cool, but not to flip, but I want to show you guys. I found these really pretty hangers and they're light wood with black accents and black hardware. Ugh, they're so cool. They end up being 50 cents a hanger because there's four in a pack and it's $2. So they have these cork tiles and there's four sheets in here for $1.99. It's pretty basic of a material, but at the same time, maybe we could do something really cool with them because this could also be something that you guys could recreate because you could easily order some cork online if it comes out cool. So I'm gonna hang on to these for $1.99. Found this fishnet and I don't know, I feel like it's $3.99. And I feel like I could do something with it. I mean, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna get out of the store making a pendant light, because you always know that I like to make pendant lights, but I'm gonna hold on to this. Maybe this could be something really cool. Also, people for sure think that I'm insane because I stand in an aisle with something in my hand, like really trying to be creative and think about what it could be. And people pass by and like they're like, what are you doing? <laughs> But we like coming to the Salvation Army because it's like two stores. So one is their like regular thrift store and then they have a boutique side with like nicer kind of like with nicer items in it. And sometimes I find really cool stuff to not flip but just to have. Like if you guys follow me on Instagram, I found those leather bound art books that I got from here and then a couple of other pieces of pottery that I absolutely love. So I always browse around and see what I can find. Oh my gosh, what the heck is this? It's so weird but in a weird way it's kind of like whimsical and cool looking wow. okay so for our first DIY I figured we'd start off a little simpler but really cute too so I am actually doing a room makeover for my nieces right now two separate rooms and I wanted to make some cute DIYs for them so I was excited when I kind of like came across these materials so first thing I found was this set of cork sheets from the Salvation Army they were a dollar ninety nine and there are four thick sheets of cork in here so I felt like it was a great basic DIY material that we could kind of do something with. And then I found these three frames, gold frames, really simple at Goodwill. They were $2.99 a piece, but one of them had a chipped glass. So I thought this was a perfect way to make some kind of mini picture bulletin boards, something for their room that they could pin up pictures of their like Polaroids because they have so many Polaroids of them and their friends. Like, you could find some antique vintage frames if you wanted to create a really beautiful bulletin board or cork board where you can pin up like inspiration pictures for your office or something like that. Super simple. All we're gonna do is take one of these sheets and glass out of one of these so that we can measure exactly how big we need our cork to be. This will work. So I'm just gonna lay the backing right on top. You could simply just mark this and then cut it. I'm going to 
attempt to use the X-Acto knife. Let's see if it works. And we're just cutting it out to fit inside of our frame. Just gonna cut it the rest of the way. Now that we have our cork sheet to size, I'm gonna slide all the rest of this stuff out. You could also buy larger sheets of cork too. You don't have to have these like smaller, um, they look like 12 by 12 sheets. We don't need the glass anymore because we actually wanna be able to pin on our board. I'm gonna slide this one in like this. Oh, like a glove. Voila, so simple. You can get some really cute little pins. Target always has really cute ones. And I had these in my office already, but they're just super simple gold little pins. How cute, super simple. And I have three of them, so I can just do the same thing to all three and then hang them up really cute together. was this fishing net, fish net, genuine fish net. So my style isn't nautical at all, but I felt like I can kind of make it and turn it or use it as a material into something to kind of look like mesh. Not entirely sure, but I got it for $3.99 and it's pretty big. It's five foot by 10 foot. My plan and my idea, I know you guys love that I do a pendant light. <laughs> so I'm thinking that I'm gonna do a tiered pendant light where it's smaller at the top and then it kind of swoops out to a larger kind of tier and then it comes back down to a small size or multiple of them. Never done this before, obviously. I don't know how this is gonna go, but I picked up a few supplies that I think might help do that. So I went to Michael's and I picked up some silver hoops. These are floral hoops and they're fairly inexpensive. I'll put all the pricing on the screen. Three of these, so two kind of smallish medium size and then one large. Some 26 gauge silver wire to kind of attach the fishnet to it was my plan. And then I was like, oh my gosh, what if that doesn't work? So I also picked up some embroidery hoops that I feel like could be painted. It would be weird. The color combination of all of it would be a little weird, but I picked up the same combination of sizes along with these smaller sized wooden circles, cabon rings. You never know what's possible until you try it. So let's see how this goes. So first let's take a look at this fishnet and let's see what's what's going on. It's kind of not a great color. Oh. Oh, and it doesn't smell great either. It smells like a barn. Where's the five foot in here? Oh, 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 it's folded, it's folded, it's folded. It's okay, 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 okay. I'm thinking this larger one is gonna be the center, right? And then it's gonna tear up to this one and then on top of this one can be something really small that fits around the string of the pendant light. Am I making any sense whatsoever? So I'm thinking what we need to do first is find the middle of our fishing net, fish net, and wrap it around this larger one. Let's start large and then work our way smaller. You guys, I don't know how this one's gonna go. <laughs> could also, if I still hate the color, I could also it's raining outside, obviously can't spray paint outside. Can I spray paint fishnet? But we're gonna use LED lights, so they're not gonna put off a lot of heat. So we don't have to worry about this being um, like catching fire. So that's a plus. Okay, wait, I, I really do think that this could, I think this could really work. Okay, let me take all the tag. So I'm gonna take my hoop and this wire. We're gonna tack the fishnet around this hoop on the inside um, ever so often so that it stays in place. Kind of like very nicely tack it because we don't really want to see the tacks. We want it to look professional like that. Like I just wrapped it around a couple of times and just make it tight. 
sometimes with these projects you just have to have a little imagination and you know just see if your idea can come together what if I never tried this? I just thought it could be possible, but I never really knew. Okay, so let me tack this all the way around and then we'll move on. I figured out exactly how much I need to go around this big hoop. I'm just gonna cut all of this excess part off. Okay, so now that I have the center one all tacked down, now it's time to move on to some smaller hoops above and below that one. So when it comes to spacing, I have no idea. I'm thinking maybe a good like, maybe like eight inches or 10 inches maybe. Like depending on how big of a pendant light or how many tiers, I guess, if you guys wanted to try this out, something like that. Okay, so I'm gonna tack this one down the same way. There's just gonna be all of this excess that we don't need anymore. And we're gonna kind of shape it as we go. You can really see this in a really cool, kind of like warm industrial beach house. Definitely thinking that I wanna spray paint it black because I feel like black will just kind of make it look less like fishnet and a little more industrial. You know, you have to try things out. I love creating new things. I love just kind of pushing my own boundaries and I hope it inspires you guys to just be creative. Maybe not to make this exact thing, but I hope it inspires you guys to just think outside the box when especially going thrift shopping because you never know what you could do. They could turn out absolutely amazing like the carousel pendant lights that I made did. They could flop a little bit. At least you were creative and you tried and you push yourself outside of your comfort zone. I hope that all these projects just kind of inspire you guys and maybe you like them too. Maybe you want to recreate them. So I found it was easiest to actually tack the fishnet onto the hoops by hanging it up. Where the fishnet ends are on both sides, I kind of Frankenstein it together if you guys can see. I'm thinking once it's painted, you're not going to be able to see the difference between the metal and the fishnet and it'll all kind of really blend in together. I have the biggest hoop on and then one small one. So I'm going to put another small one here. Then we're going to figure out how to put the top on the pendant light and then cut off all of the excess. So I've got one more hoop to go and then we'll keep going. Okay, so I got one, two, three hoops. And this bottom hoop, I think this is gonna be the final or bottom. So I tacked it really well every other one so that that could be the bottom. And I'm just gonna go in and cut it right below that hoop so we can finish it off. For the top, where it's actually gonna sit on the pendant light, I have this larger gauge wire make it into a big enough loop or a big enough hoop to sit and rest on top of the pendant light. I'm kind of thinking I just wanna weave it through the fishnet on the top. Instead of kind of tacking and making it a circle, I feel like we could get away with doing that. So I'm gonna slip it inside and I'm just gonna kind of weave it in and out of these holes. Kind of gathering it together too. So now I'm just gonna cut off this excess. I'm gonna take this kind of like near a window in a box and spray paint it black. And then I'll show you guys what it looks like.
project. I really wanted to do a piece of clothing because I have been dying to bleach dye some more things. I haven't bleach dyed in probably a few years, but it's largely made a comeback. So I actually found these kind of oversized baggy brown sweatpants at the Salvation Army at the thrift store for $1.99. So the first thing that we need to do is tighten the elastic around my feet, my ankles. They're just like too big right here. So I really wanna cinch them in here. All I'm gonna do is take some pins and pin the elastic exactly where I, how much I wanna take it in. So now that we have exactly where we need our new kind of hole width to be, I just marked each side with a new pin and opening up this hole, I'm just gonna take a seam ripper and rip out some of the seams along this bottom hem so that we can get to the elastic on the inside. So Reebok decided to sew the elastic into the hem, which I understand why they did it because if not, if you've ever had a piece of clothing that where the elastic is like flipping over on your like, like around your waist, that's why they sewed it in. So I understand, but it kind of uh, changes my plan a little bit. So instead of just removing just a little bit of the hem and then just pulling the elastic tighter and sewing it, I'm gonna take the entire hem out and then do that and then hem it back with the same color thread. Just an extra step or a little bit longer of a step, but has the same effect. Okay, so I got the elastic out and thread that came out of the seam. That took me like two minutes. It's more like aggravating to take it out than it is like time consuming. So don't, don't be afraid to just rip out the seam. So this is the original size of the elastic, which is way too big for my ankle. So I'm gonna measure the elastic from the side to where we put the pin where I need it to fit my ankle. We are gonna sew a new seam in the elastic right here. So now I'm gonna cut the rest of this elastic that we don't need anymore that's too big for me off. Okay, so now I'm gonna turn my pant leg inside out and I realize that not everyone's gonna have a sewing machine. Um, so this could totally be done by hand as well. You would just need to sew this by hand, like just straight, and then you just reattach it by sewing it by hand all the way around. It takes a little bit more time, but totally doable. So now that we have our elastic cut, I don't need these pins anymore. So I'm just gonna take them out because this is our new ankle size. So I'm gonna put the elastic around the hem and it's gonna cinch it in like that because that's gonna be bunched around our leg. So I'm gonna fold the hem down around the elastic like this and we're gonna sew it again along this edge where it originally was sewn. And then once that's sewn together, that is our new leg hole which will be a lot more bunched and actually fit us and not look like saggy or big. If you do have a sewing machine, what's really helpful is this bottom part always on most all sewing machines actually comes off. So what happens, it gives you this ability to put the hem and the bottom of the leg around this sewing machine so you can sew straight and it's a little more stretched out. So when you're sewing, just pull the elastic really tight or taut out um, so that you can stitch it together. So this is our new finished hem on our leg and you can tell the difference. So this is the new size and this was the old size. Look how crazy that is. It's totally different and it's a lot more bunched and a lot more cute. Since that's all done, we're ready to bleach dye. Bleach dyeing is like reverse tie dye. Instead of adding color, you're just taking color away. So the darker the color of your fabric is, so if it's like black or dark blue or brown, um, even lighter colors work too, which we are going to experiment with on our Romeo and the Kenna channel. We're gonna reverse dye or bleach dye a whole bunch of really cool thrifted finds that we found, panties and sweatshirts and hoodies and all sorts of stuff. So definitely follow us, follow us over there at Romeo McKenna if you haven't already. Um, but for this one, this one's pretty dark. So hoping it pulls a good color. But the thing about bleach dyeing and reverse dyeing, 
you never know how it's gonna come out in pattern or color. You want gloves, some kind of protective material to put down where you're working. I'm gonna be also using this tub. You can wear goggles, glasses, all, all of it. Do all of it, be as safe as possible. Um, and also don't wear clothes you care about. So what you're gonna need are gloves, bleach, water, and rubber bands, and whatever you're gonna dye. I want to control where the bleach is going to go. So I highly recommend getting a squeeze bottle because it'll allow you to really get in there and make sure that the bleach is somewhat going where you want to instead of just pouring the bleach out of the tub. So what we're going to do is fill it half with water and half with bleach. And you want to just give your mixture a mix. I think I'm going to go with like this loose spiral. So if you guys remember in like tie dyeing, basically you start at a central point, grab the fabric and you twist. And you keep twisting until you have it all in a spiral together. Then you take your rubber bands, put them around the entire pant or shirt or whatever you're dyeing. Basically it keeps the spiral in place like that. Ready, set, go, right? <laughs> you should start to see the change pretty uh, see quickly. It. Yeah, you should start to see it like pull whatever color it's gonna pull. So now we're gonna turn it over and we're gonna do those same pieces on the other side. Let's wait five minutes and then go from there. Okay, so now we're gonna take off the rubber bands and rinse it out in the sink. A lot of this red, I hope, rinses out. And now next step is to wash it and dry it in regular detergent, and then it will reveal its final color. And I really hope it's still not red. <laughs> Okay, so our tie-dye just got out of the dryer, and so I wanted to show you guys what they look like before I try them on. So here is our brown pants. They're very psychedelic. They're very hippie. It actually looks like there's like a flower on my butt. Let's be honest, I'm still gonna wear them to sleep. And I actually did one of Romeo's sweatshirts, and I like it a lot better. I used less dye, only half of that squeeze bottle that I had versus the entire bottle for the other one. And you can see that it's a lot less printed, but it's like a good print. So I hope you guys enjoyed these thrift flips and kind of inspired you to maybe get started thrifting um, when we're um, back to life as normal. Maybe you have some things around the house that you could do these projects at home. And don't forget to check out our other channel, Romeo and McKenna, where we post more vlog, um, day in our life, behind the scenes, things that we do together, channel videos. And if you did like this video, give a thumbs up to the video and Kinsley, she's so tired. And if you guys aren't already subscribed to our DIY family, definitely hit the subscribe button below and we will see you guys next Sunday. Bye guys. Cab on, cab on, cab one rings. Don't come for me, I don't, cab, cab one rings. Cab one rings. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's like dirty. Interesting. Say they can spend Sundays with us. Cause what else are we going to do besides give you a haircut? Cause I can't even see your eyes. Hello?